Hello, and thank you for joining us. I'm Gwen Taylor, Senior Editor with Current Protocols at John Wiley & Sons, and I'm delighted to introduce today's webinar titled Metabolomic Profiling of Anionic Metabolites in Head and Neck Cancer Cells by Capillary Ion Chromatography with Orbitrap Mass Spectrometry. This webinar is being co-sponsored by Current Protocols and Thermo Fisher Scientific. Thermo Fisher Scientific is a world leader in serving science providing analytical technologies, reagents, consumables, services, and software for cutting-edge scientific research to routine industrial applications. Current Protocols is the largest collection of peer-reviewed, authoritative, and regularly updated step-by-step -step research techniques and procedures available for life scientists worldwide. With 17 titles and over 16,000 protocols, Current Protocols is part of Wiley Publishers. We have allotted one hour for today's program, but our speaker has agreed to stay on a bit longer to answer as many of your questions as possible. You can submit your questions throughout the event by clicking on the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Your question will not be seen by any of the other attendees, so don't be shy about asking them. The webinar will be recorded and available for viewing in the next few days. We will send each of you an email with details of how to access the recorded webinar along with a PDF of the slides and a certificate of participation. Now, it is my pleasure to introduce today's speaker. Dr. Junhua Wang received his PhD in analytical chemistry from Wuhan University in China. He did postdoctoral research at the University of Wisconsin at Madison, developing mass spectrometry-based bioanalytical methodology for neuropeptide analysis. He then moved to the Scripps Research Institute and worked as a postdoc with Dr. Gary Shustak developing LCMS-based metabolomics methods for the study of retinal-related disease. His expertise includes separation sciences, neuroscience, chemical biology, organic chemistry, QTOF, Orbitrap, and MALDI imaging. He is currently a metabolomics market application specialist at Thermoscientific. So let's begin with a very warm welcome to you, Dr. Wang. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jun Hua Wang. I'm the Metabolomics Application Specialist in Thermo Fisher Scientific. Today is my pleasure to give a webinar and talk about the, the metabolomic profiling of anaerobic metabolites in head and neck cancer cells by capillary uh, ion chromatography with orbitrap mass spectrometer. I divided the contents into two parts. First, I'm giving a brief introduction of general challenges in metabolomics and our solutions. Next, I'm going to share how we used capillary ion chromatography with orbitrap mass spectrometer to address this particular interesting and challenging metabolomics in the oral cancer cell line. For those who are not familiar with metabolomics, here describes a general workflow for non-target LCMS metabolomics it consists, consists of several basic steps from the study design, sample preparation, LCMS experiment, data processing use, statistical software to generate uh, the non-target list, then differential analysis to find the trends and the metabolites of interest, and target MSMS for metabolomic, metabolites identification. After the identification, People need to understand the met metabolic pathway and find out the relevant biological content and to generate the hypothesis. To validate if the metabolite is a candidate of a biomarker, a large scale of target experiment, like hundreds of samples, need to be carried out to confirm the observation. Usually, the experiment will be done on triple quadruple mass spectrometer. There are many analytical challenges to metabolomic study. For example, the bio biological samples are very complex. The concentration range of metabolites is very wide. The metabolites are of very different physical and chemical properties, which may require many more than one separation techniques. Also, the metabolites identification is challenging because of too many isomeric or isobaric compounds. On top of that, one of the critical step, steps is to find the most interesting metabolites in the analysis. So to summarize those difficulties, this is like looking for a little in a haystack if without the red tools. 
but with the help of ready tools like statistical software, you might be able to zoom in or fill out your little and make your life much easier. So, what are the right tools for metabolomic study? A review paper in the most impactful chemistry review journal has answered the first question. The red separation, separation technolo technology is the first important tool being used to resolve the sam sample complexity. This figure shows on the top. <coughs> this figure shows on the shows the distribution of the different separation methods that have appeared in metabolomics publication. You can see the publication number here. In metabolomics has been increasing steadily over the last ten years. Second, in metabolomics community, many software tools has, have been developed. The second tool would be choosing the right software to reduce your data complexity and help you in data processing. And the third, metabolite identification has been commonly admitted as a bottleneck in metabolomics, so a red database to get us in automated metabolite identification is also criti critical to make your analysis successful. What thermoscientific has contributed to solve these difficulties in metabolomics field? First, the orbitrap mass spectrometry has provided the best data quality in terms of sensitivity, resolution, and mass accuracy, as well as the excellent stability and the robustness in use. Second, we have developed a pro proprietary software safe, which contains at least three unique features, the background subtraction, molecular ion grouping, and password visualization that no other vendor software will provide. Third, we have developed and we are populating thousands of metabats in the next generation structural elucidation database, MZ Cloud, which contains high resolution, multi stage MS spectra, the fragment prediction based on experimental data, and the thermal scientific mass frontier technology. And it does searching, comparison, and annotation automatically. Compared to Q executive instrument that have have been in the metabolomics application field for uh, many years. Orbitrap, especially Q executive, is relatively young and new. There are some misleading statements on the Q top over the Orbitrap. The first is speed is the number one request in metabolomics. Q top is the old cho uh, the only choice. However. The untucked metabolomics profiling experiment starts with full scan. So 3 to hertz, 4 hertz can only meet the demanding HPLC separation that produce 4 to 6 second peak width. Second, QTOF can maintain higher speed and sensitivity. However, the truth is that very few users run the QTOF at more than 20 hertz, and the QTOF detector has to accumulate an average meaning about three scans to get the better data quality. So this has significantly bring the speed down. And third, QTOF is a high resolution instrument. The truth is that many QTOFs has an effective resolution of 10 to 20 thousand QTOF has to trade off its sensitivity, speed, and re for higher resolution. But on the, the orbitrap mass spectrometer, is, for example, the QExactive can achieve 35,000 resolution at 7 hertz without compromising the data quality. Orbitrap offers excellent performance, including resolution, speed, and mass accuracy. For example, on the QExactive, with resolution at 70,000, we get more than sufficient scan point in the most demanding UHPLC separation time scale. In this case, we separate 
As you see in the solution, from a theorem sample by the UHPLC, we got 16, 17 points across the four and a half peak width, second peak width. In another demonstration, we see excellent scan to scan mass accuracy and stability with polarity switching. OPTRAP offers two high resolution. You can get much higher resolution in low mass range as shown in this orange curve. So this further emphasizes that OPTAP is actually the right choice for small molecule and metabolomic measurement. Resolving power is especially useful to estabilizing metabolomics or fluxomics. For example, we know a previous QTOF user who wants to use N15 labeling for glutamine and to track the labeled I mean, in the metabolic pathway in the patient. However, unfortunately, the glutamine and glutamate co elute in the reverse phase LC. At the same time, the labeled glutamine and natural glutamate was not resolved on the 20,000 resolution mass spectrometer. The monolo isotope of the labeled glutamine was overlapped by the second isotope of the natural glutamine, which is the A1. So the quantitative measurement become a big problem. This started using the Q executive. The two peaks now can get lessly resolved even and 70K. The labeling technology works again, and they don't have to re develop the LC method and redo the Intel analysis. Thus, we know that in an LCMS analysis, it is common to detect thousands of ions, which is called features. It is unfortunate that in no mass range, you will see hundreds of background contaminant features that come from the system. They will interfere with the real signal and make the data processing more complicated. One of the less features of SAFE software is the background subtraction. For data processing in SAFE, we ask you to acquire a solvent blank by setting up a single to noise threshold. SAFE can subtract the background, the blank, the peaks from the solvent and make the background much cleaner. What SIF does in identifying a component? First, it aligns the chromatography across the sample groups. At the same time, it detects all the features and groups them into individual components. Then SIF does peak integration from the master component for the master component and you can view and check the peaks in each LC run. Based on the peak integration, the trends across the, sa across the sample group for that component will be calculated. As we pointed out earlier, metabolite identification is a bottleneck in metabolomics. Thermal Scientific and HICAM has started building a MSN library called MZ Cloud since two years ago. Now, inf now the infrastructure searching algorithm have been completed, and we have populated thousands of compounds into the library. The basic idea is that high-quality MSN spectra are generated using reference chemicals and are put into a web-based server for searching. You can search the entire MSN tray or a individual spect spectra. Then the library will return the hits with a score to show the similarity and provide you the structure candidate with similar structure. It took a lot of effort to acquire the MSN spectra and to make it easy to convert to the format that MZ Cloud can handle for you to search. We have actually built an in-house software to acquire the spectra tray with the best quality the widest and the deepest spectral tray in an automated and intelligent way. This is an example showing 
we can acquire the MS entry by fusion MS mass spectrometer in the UHPLC time scale. Again, this is the separation of isolution and lucin from the urine sample. In 0.6 seconds, the fusion can get one MS orbital full scan with a resolution 120,000, two MS MS spectrometer spectra with H HCDI ion trap scans and 4 MS3 CID orbital trap scan with resolution 30,000. The speed is enough to get 10 points across the peaks. The generated MS3 tray was searched in the cloud as shown in, in this slide. So this slide shows the uh, MZ Cloud website. From the left side, you can see the search option. Uh, in the middle, you can see the candidate structure and the score. And here shows the search query spectra and the library spectra. Uh, in the in the bottom, you can see the overlay of the spectra. The green one shows the library. And the red one shows the query spectra. In the middle, it shows the difference. The visible fragment shows the difference of the tray. So we know that in MZ Cloud, it contains three isomers of leucine and isoleucine, non leucine. It is quite nice that the score of the right isomer, isoleucine, is the highest and it is the top hit which may indicate that MZ Cloud MS entry can possibly discriminate the isomers based on the fragments and their profiles. Please note that the search algorithm has a very high tolerance to the difference of fragment type and the mass accuracy. In this particular case, the MS2 for the query and the library is totally different for the query spectra. It is HCD with ion trap detection, Well, for the library entry, it is CID with orbit trap detection. And the, the cloud still gives a very good score, so we can see that MZ Cloud will, has provided us very abundant information and a lot of possibility to identify the two unknowns. As a summary, metabolo metabolomics is a field with many interests and challenges. There are three major tools in the metabolomics practice, and the thermal has offered exciting opportunities for metabolomics. So here I'm going to give a brief introduc introduction of the research background. In a previous proteomics study, our colleague collaborators have found that the cancer stem neck cells, the CSC cells, were presenting in highly invasive UM, UM1 cancer line. By proteomics method and Western blood analysis, they found the stem cell marker, such as CD44, OCD4, SOX2, and line, were upregulated in the CSC. So in this work, we want to investigate in another angle, with the goal to find out the altered metabolic pathway in the cancer stem cells and if the transcription factor SOX11 plays a role in the cancer cell metabolism. Experimentally, the CSC cells and lung stem cancer cell were isolated from the UM1. At the same time, the SOX11 were locked down in both UM1 and UM5 cell line. Then the metabolites were extracted and sent to the cap IC MS experiment. So this is the typical metabolomics study design. A survey in the NCBI using glycolysis and the cancer returns 4,500 4, publications. The number decreases to 160 when including the mass spectrometry. It further drops to 40 if the LC is included. So what may this number tell us? It appears that the glycolysis has caused much attention. However, the ability to study the glycolysis in cancers using mass spectrometry 
especially using LC as a front end separation has been rare, probably due to the difficulties in detecting them by the LC method. A survey in human metabolome database shows that in human urine blood there are more than 20 superfamilies of metabolites, from which we can also see that the top candidates are organic acid, amino acids, nucleotides, and fatty acids. From this table and the previous slide, we can see the majority of human metabolites are polar compounds. They are probably more water soluble and are more suitable for a method like Hennig method. However, people have been seeking an alternative method to Hennig because, because of the difficulties in reproducing the Hennig separation in a routine analysis. Capillary electrophoresis has obtained much attention in metabolomics, especially in Japan. However, iron chromatography and other outstanding separation tools for polar and iron species has found no record according to this chemical review paper. We know there were a couple of conf conference and a journal, journal publication, but was ignored. Why it seems to be unimportant for IC in this field. I will come to this later. Ion exchange chromatography is generally divided into ion exchange and cation exchange. Pictorically, this shows how ion exchange chromatography works. The chloride ion represents the analyte ion, ion ion, and the, big, the bigger ones represent the ion ion in the mobile phase. At the beginning of the IC, the ion ion in the beginning of the IC, the ion ion bind to the ion exchange active site on the stationary phase particles. Those analyte ion having more affinity to the mobile phase will be pushed off the activity site by the ion ion. In contrast, those ion ion having more affinity to the stationary phase will remain longer and require higher concentration to be exchanged by using the hydroxide-based ion system. It allows us to get more flexibility in separation by just the change the ion concentration. But at a certain level, all the analyte ion will be exchanged, so then the separation is, is finished. In ion chromatography, the typical mobile phase is potassium hydroxide, a corrosive and highly conductive ion, and as it is unsuitable for mass spectrometer, mass spectrometry detector. Dionix has made a big innovation in IC technology, facilitated by the Dionix electrolytic suppressor. The suppression technology converts the highly cost, caustic mobile phase to pure water, and the potassium salt of the analyte to the acid of the analyte. As a result, the electrolytic suppressor provides continuous online desorting of both ion mobile uh, and the analyte. In this way, we are able to connect the IC to a mass spectrometer without worrying about the high concentration of salt. Additionally, the low baseline results in no chemical noise and increased sensitivity. Here is the flow diagram of CAPI IC system coupled to the Q executive. On the front end, we have the CAPI IC system with a completely mat free flow path. Here, the capillary pump of the IC system pumps DI water at 25 microliter per minute to the ion generated module. Well, the ion is generated in line of the program gradient. The anion flew through the trap column and degasser module to remove contaminants. The sample is introduced here by the auto sampler as a mixture and separated into ion ion by the cap IC column. Then as the anion and the anionized stream pass through the suppressor, they are converted into to order an acid version of the anionite. The initial response is measured by the conductivity detector of the IC system. 
To complete the IC fluid diagram, DI water is driven by the pump to drive the hydrolysis re reaction of the electrolytic device, the suppressor and the trap. As the water and the analyte stream leave the IC system, they combine with the dissolvation mixture at the low dead volume mixing T. The mix mixture then passes through the grounding unit and enter to the coexective mass spectrometer. So here shows a gradient of the IC we used. And this figure shows the intraday reproducibility um, analysis of 42 metabolite standards by the capacity with conductivity detector. So we see less than 0.8% RSD for both retention and intensity were observed by calculating the inorganic ion, like chloride, bicarbonate, and phosphate. Here shows a comparison of the separation of 22 polar metabolites using the cap IC and helic method. As we can see, IC can get much better pick shape for the testing metabolites, especially for those isomers that cannot be well resolved by the helic. In addition, the Q executive with the IC separation can obtain very good concentration sensitivity and the mass sensitivity. The IOD reaches to as low as 0.04 nanomolar. Here shows the results by three methods, cap IC, helic method, and the reverse phase on a number of polar metabolites like nucleotides, organic acid, sugar monophosphate from the cells. We clearly see that the cap IC is much capable to detect those metabolites and it shows and it shows more. We clearly see that the cap IC is much capable to detect those metabolites and it shows much better sensitivity. From this Venn diagram we can see that the cap IC covers all the peaks that the UHPSA can detect. It doubles the peak number that the helix can, can detect except for one large metabolite, the succinate con A, which, is, which has a mass of 870. The IC has shown amazing separation for the sugar monophosphate or diphosphate isomers. This shows the comparison of the separation of sugar monophosphate by using the cap IC and by using the UHPLC, by the cap I, capillary flow I, uh, IOC, uh, helix measure using high flow, and the helix measure using no flow. The five separations were connected to the same mass spectrometer using the same full scan. The condition for the different flow has been optimized. For this, M over Z 259, which which is the sugar monophosphate, we can the capacity can detect the eleven peaks from the cells. Well, the other LC method found only one to three peaks. The Zig P helix method had detected three peaks and appeared to be a satisfy, satisfying separation. However, the actual peak number from the IC, I indicate that the majority of the isomer species were either missing or possibly co-eluded in, in the Hennig method. If we compare the peak intensity, we can see the cap IC is at E8 never. Well, the other method is from E5 to E7, which is 10 to 1,000 1, X fold lower. So the performance of the cap IC is very makes us very excited. To find out the commonly changed metabolites in all three cell lines, for example, UM1 slash UM1 lockdown, UM5, and the cancer stem cell versus non-stem cancer cell may provide more focused information and understanding of the metabolite, metabolic change. SAFE provides similar results to XMS online, but 
meta analysis is not available at this moment in C. So we show the results of MAT XMS data here. So we detect three to four thousand significant features in the three cell lines. Among them, 218 features are commonly changed feature in all three cell lines. One example is the GMP, which is significantly higher in the SOX11 lockdown cells and in the lung stem cancer cells. Following the differential analysis, metabolite identification takes a great effort. As Oliver Fenn has pointed out in a recent webinar, metabolite identification is all about isomers. To a certain degree, yes, it is very true. If we think about the 11, peak, 11 sugar monophosphate isomers, they have very similar structures. For example, for the peak line and the peak 10, the MS MS spectra are very similar. The library search shows a MS MS match, but we were not able to differentiate them by the MS spectra only because they are exactly the same. So in this case, the retention time match with the standard will be leaded for the confident identification, which again highlights the importance of the separation. In this study, we found the sugar monophase fate extremely interesting because of because we never expect expected seeing so many isomers, and we didn't see any report of so many isomers in the cell line in one study. As pointed out before, the common metabolites might be of more interest. Based on the retention orders and their high resolution XMS MSMS data, we identified and putatively identified these 11 pigs. The change of the sugar monophosphate in the three cell line were also identified. Four pigs, include, including pig three, the glucose one phosphate, pig line for fructose six for, um, phosphate, pig ten, glucose six phosphate, and pig eleven, mannose six f phosphate or significantly upregulated in the cancer stem cell versus non cancer stem cell. And the, the trends are the same in the UM1 cancer cell and the UM5 cancer cell versus the knockdown. So we talked about the SAFE. The other highlight of the SAFE is the CAG pathway visualization. CAG is one of the most well known database for metabolite pathway. It has all the pathways telling you the endogenous metabolites transition step by step. Having the CAG plugged into SIF 2.1, we can automatically see the metabolites and the change in all samples and how these metabolites are fitted into the pathway. So the pathway visualization tool gives you an idea of how many pathways have been found and their names, the numbers of metabolites in each pathway, and their names, their change, and their location in the, in the maps. So this is a re really useful for next step biological hypothesis generation. In this study, using the UM1 slash UM1 knockdown cell as an example, SAFE detected 72 meta metabolic pathway. In each pathway, the, the metabolite number varies from 2 to 36, and it shows TC and glycolysis are changed. So this is a glycolysis map from CAG. The inside shows the pathway, and the outside shows the change of metabolites that were detected by the CAPIC and Q executive. This zoom in shows the plot of the intensity, the full change, and the p-value, as well as well as the biological variation of this component. So as you can see that. 17 out of 19 metabolites in the glycolysis has been successfully detected and relatively quantified by the CAPIC system. It displayed a constant significant upregulation in the C 
cancer stem cell versus non-stem cancer cell for almost all the metabolites. And the pathway analysis suggests that the glycolysis pathway might be elevated in the cancer stem cell. In a brief summary, the IC covers almost all the metabolites in glycolysis and TCA cycle, and it has provided us the new opportunities to detect those metabolites that are traditionally challenging to IOC measured. So as a conclusion, in this study, we have performed an untargeted metabolomic analysis of the head and neck cancer cells particularly the cancer stem cells versus non-stem cancer cells. The outstanding resolution of IC has led to the differentiation of many isobaric and isomeric polar metabolites. Our pre preliminary finding regarding the metabolic reprogramming in the sugar metabolism of cancer stem cell was well achieved by the IC high-resolution acrid mass orbital mass metabolomics approach. And we thank the a large scale validation and the in depth integration of the metabolomic data with proteomics and the ge genomics data is to be performed. In the end I want to thank our colleague in UCLA for providing such an interesting project. I want to thank Heikam and my colleague in Thermo Fisher for their wonderful work to push the solution in Thermo Scientific. And I want to thank you for your attention.